In this video, we're going to solve the heat equation. We're going to solve the heat equation in dimension d, where d obviously is an integer which is not zero, so let's consider omega included in rd. That will be an open set, bounded, and with enough regularity, so we don't have problems with the boundary. t is going to be a positive number, and I'm going to consider u0, which is, uh, well, this is going to be the initial condition, and f, which will be the heat source, the, the data, uh, and these will be in these spaces here. Now, I could actually write u not an f uh, as an element of the space capital F, which is simply defined uh, here as L2 of omega times L2 0 t L2 of omega. And you see that this makes sense because we just defined in the previous video uh, L2 0 t x, where x is a Hilbert space, and obviously L2 of omega is a Hilbert space. So actually, uh, this is a little bit redundant. Let me just write things this way. All right. So we are in the middle of a theorem, right? So, so we're going to state a result. We're going to state, uh, we're going to, 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 to affirm something here. Uh, here is what we're going to say. The heat equation has a unique solution in this space. This space is E, it is L2 in 0t, H10 of omega, and that's uh, intersect intersected with C0, 0t, L2. In other words, what I'm saying is that the solution to the heat equation uh, is going to be L2 in time and H1 in space, and also continuous in time and uh, with, with um, uh, L2 in space. That's what I'm saying, and there is a unique solution. So it has a solution, and this solution is unique. Furthermore, uh, there exists a constant C, such that uh, we have this inequality here, uh, the norm L2 of U plus the uh, norm uh, L2, 0, T, uh, H1, 0 of U uh, is bounded, by the norm L2 of the initial condition and the norm L2, 0, T, L2 of uh, the, the data. So let me actually uh, ju just, just first say that the proof of this theorem is, is not something we're going to, to do in this course, uh, but here is a, a, a reference where it's done very, very well. It's beautifully written, so I uh, suggest you go see this, the, the proof there. Uh, and, and what we're going to do here is though try to explain what this inequality means. So let me actually look at this uh, inequality and we're going to try to explain each term. So first, remember we have the data. The data is the initial condition you're not and the, 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 the heat source, F. And that is in the space F we, we defined earlier. So what we have is this initial condition, and what we have here is the L2 norm of this, this initial condition. This appears on the right-hand side here. Uh, we also have uh, F, which is the right-hand side to the PDE, and that is F, and we quantify the sum of its L2 norm over time, right? It's basically the L2 um, norm that we defined in the previous video. Uh, so, so, so these two terms on the right-hand side. So you see uh, what's going to happen to the left-hand side, which tells you about the, the solution to our PDE, uh, will be bounded by things you know. You know you're not, and you know your heat source. Uh, and that will be uh, the, the bounding factors uh, in, in your inequality. Now, at time t, we can bound u in e, and, and that's the left-hand side. What I'm saying is that we have the solution in norm L2, and we also have the sum of the H10 norms, uh, what I'm saying, the sum, obviously, it's the integral, uh, of u over time up to t. Okay, so this is what, what we have here. Now, I would like to point out that uh, what, what we're really saying here is that the norm of the solution in E, the space of the solution, is completely controlled by the norm of the data in F. And I can even 
you know, I, I can actually uh, actually give give a name to to this to this space E, and that will be called the space, the energy space. Uh, and and the norm of the solution in E will be called the energy. Okay, so. Uh, what we have here is that if f is equal to zero, the uh, well, the, the right hand side obviously, uh, the integral between zero and t uh, will of, of f s uh, square l two uh, uh, omega will, will be equal to zero. So what I have is that the right hand side will ob obviously be a constant, whereas the the, the integral between zero and t of u s square uh, will be actually keep keep going up. So so what we have is that the energy of the solution has no other choice but to decrease. And when that happens, and it happens here, we say that we have a dissipative equation. So the heat equation is dissipative. Uh, just would like to finish this video by a remark. I talked about the energy. Uh, that is not necessarily an energy in the physical, the true physical sense of the system. And I just wanted to point this out before finishing this video.